is called segmentation. And segmentation is a conceptual thing, it's a viewing thing. That, that when you look at a body or a line, line and form, if you look at a person standing in a fully extended position with their arms over their head, if they're a line, to you visually it prescribes a straight line. Or you could say a one segment shape. Now any rather abrupt, abrupt bend in that shape becomes by definition a two segment shape. So she bends over a little. She drops her arms to the mind's eye, it becomes a three segment shape. If she bends her knees, it becomes a four segment shape. I'm not counting the feet. This is just a conceptual thing, the large body parts, okay? Now, segmentation uh, refers to segments that are symmetrical, all right? That we have one segment shape, two, three, and four. Now, they need not necessarily be straight lines to be a segment. Any perfectly regular curved line is a one segment shape. In other words, take for example, uh, a slightly hollowed total body shape. Okay, that's different than a pipe. That's a two segment shape. Slightly hollowed is one. Why am I going through this litany of a definition? Well, because segmentation says this, that as skill proficiency increases, as you get better at doing skills, the number of segmental components used in its execution decreases. You use fewer segments. Let's take some examples. Uh, the first one up there on A is the hand support phase of a backward handspring. The girl in the first example, her knees are bent, going over the top. A lot of people bend their knees when they do flip flops over the top. Nothing wrong with that. Some, you might argue it makes them turn over faster because that radius is shorter, coach. So bend your knees a little, you can get turned over faster. That's the compensatory technique, remember. Enter your house a guest, then a secret friend, and finally your master in defeat. What if, because my girl is going to beat your girl, what if she could do the same skill with her knees locked over the top? What if she could reduce that to the number of segments only to, to one segment, not two? only to the necessary and critical few. Back handsprings is a one segment shape. Back handsprings going down the mat really is going from a slightly arched to a slightly hollowed, slightly arched, slightly hollowed. That's the shape change, okay? So in terms of your mind's eye, the concept, and you're only as good as your mind's eye, you think of back handsprings done well as merely a one segment shape. The second example. The girl in the uh, first example of B does a leg raise. Because of lack of flexibility in her hips, she has to bend the knee of the support leg to get that other leg up there. You know, it's kind of like, I can do this one real well because I've practiced in flexibility for years. You know, you go to lift this up and you can't go any higher, so you can bend your knee to get your leg up. Well, she's doing the same thing. It looks a lot better. But really, a basic leg raise is a two segment shape. If she had adequate flexibility in her hip joints and appropriate muscular power, she could take that leg and go, just like in ballet, bless them, raise that leg up, okay? In fact, ballet is wonderful. Classical ballet for gymnastics. Don't let anybody tell you any different. It's wonderful. I used to think they were crazy until I discovered it was I who was crazy and they were right. Okay, the ability to control the limb, just raise it right up like that to a two-segment shape. You can't reduce it to a one-segment shape unless, of course, you cut a leg off. Okay, so what is the necessary or fewest number of segments for me? It's a two-segment shape. Does that mean you should do it that way at the start? No, you can do it like this. I'm doing the same thing, I'm doing a lot of segments. But your job is refining the performance. Reduce it from eight to ten to seven to four to two. You follow me? That type of thing. All right. The number C. This is the input phase for a uh, front handspring. This girl uses. Uh, a lot of kids tend to do this when they put their arms down. They tend to decrease in their shoulder angle. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. When
you learn it, okay? It's refining the process, though. It's really a three-segment shape. You notice this is a perfectly regular curved shape. So one segment. And you have to bend your knee in order to push. You can't do it locked knee because you need a push leg. It is, by definition, a three-segment shape. There's a lot of problems with a decreased angle like this because when you punch on the ground, you're only on the ground for a moment, a split second in time. You don't have time to go from here to here. By the time you start to do that, school's out, you're already off the ground. Not very high, but you've already spent yourself. You have to be already in position. Jonathan Livingston Seagull said, perfect flight is being there. So you want to set the stage for that, and that's one of the factors that will help in proper rebounding out of a front handspring. So you see, if you use the concept of segments, it will, uh, it will help you. Let's take another one, and this is just more of a progression. Uh, a kick up to a handstand. In A, The girl goes, she's going to kick up the handstand. Nothing wrong with that. It's fine. But I'm looking at it and I'm seeing that she drops her arm. She goes from a one segment shape to a three. Bends her knee, drops her shoulder joint, decreases the shoulder joint, bends her knee. Five, one, three, five, kicks three, back to one. Conceptually, I ask myself, how can I reduce the segments to the necessary and critical few? to give it the cutting edge look. Well, it's really a one, two, 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 one shape. In other words, it, I'm reducing it down. Or another way is the only movements observed is in one hip joint. Everything is the same. If I took this picture out from here down, it's the same as this one. If I took this out, it's the same as this one. In other words, you reduce it so that the movement you observe is cleared and focused. It's not random with different things going on. It's purposeful. It's directed. It shows sureness of execution. It renders to the judge's eye a reason to award you at the first place, even if she doesn't know what it is. So you reduce the segments down to the necessary and critical view. Now, keep in mind this, that as you do that, the physical requirements become greater and greater, okay? In other words, you, it's harder to do it with fewer segments. It's harder to turn over with fewer segments, okay? That doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. It means that we should do it because it looks better, okay? And it will gain you a victory that you otherwise would not enjoy. Because they say, you know, for some reason, that girl just, just moves better. Nasty. She's very good with reducing segments so that her lines are just flow patterns. They're not angles. In fact, I think Tony Gaiman talked about taking the angles out of tumbling, something like that. It was very good. I like the idea of, you know, his concepts there because it's saying the same thing. Like the giant wave evolves in a flow pattern, not in angulations. Okay, let's see what's next here. 